An object's position is given by this function here, and we want to find the speed of the object at time 2. Now remember that speed is going to be the magnitude of the velocity function. Okay, so first thing we need is the velocity function, which would be the derivative of the position function. So let's start with that. Derivative of our position function here, 3t squared, 6t, and a minus 1. And then speed will be the magnitude of that velocity. Now, in this case, we could make our lives a little easier by evaluating our velocity function first. But, uh, just for the sake of fun, an argument, we'll go ahead and find the magnitude in general here and then evaluate it at 2. Uh, okay, so to find the magnitude of a vector, we do square root of sum of the squares. So 3t squared squared plus 6t squared plus negative 1 squared. There we go, 9t to the fourth plus 36t squared plus 1. And there is our magnitude of velocity. If we need the magnitude at t equals 2, we can then plug in 2 for t. to find our uh, velocity, which turns out to be square root of 289, which is 17. So the speed at time 2 is 17, whatever our units are, perhaps meters per second or something like that. Again, we could have here um, evaluated our velocity function at 2, Right, and come up with uh, 2 squared is 4 times t 3 is 12, 6 times 2 is 12, and 1. Uh, and then uh, found the magnitude of that vector, right, uh, as an alternative to what we did down here. Uh, it would work just as well. Uh, it's just, uh, this gives us some idea how the or this equation tells us how the speed is changing over time, which might or might not be interesting.